welcome to the Takaraska Review Fan Podcast, where fans from around the world get together to talk about Takaraska. Uh, we've got some fun stuff to talk about today. Thank you very much for all of you who responded to our call for things that you'd like to hear us talk about. Um, one of the things that you all mentioned was that you'd like us to talk about golden combis. So we're going to start from that um, prompt and see where it takes us. And with us today is me, Jen, in New York, and... Kate from the UK. Well, Durham, but no one knows where that is, so the UK. <laughs> So Kate's new to the podcast, as some of you regular listeners might know. So I wanted to kind of start um, and giving Kate a chance to kind of introduce herself um, and anything about fandom that she wanted to talk about. So take it away. So, um, well, I'll just talk about how I got into Takarazuka. So basically, I've been a fan of musicals for like forever, basically, um, starting off with vanilla stuff like Andrew Lloyd Webber. But then really, really falling into the rabbit hole when I discovered French musicals, because they are catchy as heck. Um, so I did, you know, the usual uh, Mozart, L'Opéra Rock, and then I did uh, La Légende de Roi Arthur, sorry, my pronunciation. Um, and then I discovered German musicals, and those were really catchy as well. <laughs> um, so then eventually, of course, when I was looking researching um uh seven seventeen eighteen nine oh that sounds really weird in english uh the french musical <laughs> seventeen eighteen nine um mm -hmm. i saw that there was another version of it apparently a japanese production of seventeen eighteen nine. kind of the name was something like tapas kind of like oh fun um then i was researching king arthur and there's also a japanese version by the same group um, and then I was researching Elizabeth, and uh, there were eight, nine versions done by that group. So I was like, huh, this is <laughs> an interesting um, group. And then I think what finally pulled me into the rabbit hole was that I saw a um, clip of uh, Ranju Tomu and Lano Hana dancing to Libertango. I think that just oh, yeah. that just ended it for me. That that dance was so beautiful, <laughs> um, and yeah. So I, I very slowly got into. Well, I, I first all looked into Toho before Takarazuka because that was just more accessible. I wasn't really familiar with the idea of an all female theater group, but I watched Toho and got to know um, like the big names, like. Uh, Ah, Suzukaze? Uh, is that her name? Yeah, yeah. Suzukaze Mayo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah. I saw her as um, um, Sophie and Elizabeth, and I was like, oh my god, she is amazing. And then, of uh -huh. course, there was Hannah Fusamari, and it's like, oh, she is amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, that's <laughs> that's kind of how I got into Takarazuka. I think the first musical I ever watched, like, full length, was. Probably, I think it was Hanagumi's um, Ocean's Eleven, and oh, I was just really? done for by then because that was so was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's, that's really, me. Really interesting. Yeah, it's like it's interesting because it used to be like a lot of new fads. Like their first full length show was Elizabeth. So oh it's yeah. Very interesting to hear that it was Ocean's Eleven. Was yeah. The first one I mean, episode. the first. I guess the first um, show. I saw that had Takarazuka actors in was still Elizabeth. <laughs> that's just right. like the that's the that's the portal from the just general musical theater world into Takarazuka. I feel like it's such a it's either that yeah. or um, uh, Derubara. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're they're both such a big thing with Takarazuka. There's so yeah. many different oh versions. You, yeah. you can't like throw a stone without hitting mm. one of them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. And I love that, like, one of the things that you mentioned that first kind of got you into it was seeing um, Ranji Tomu and... Oh, my and God, her, yeah. Yeah, doing the dance together, because that fits into our topic today perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> um, Segway, too. 
Yeah. Uh, so before we even jump into that, let's let's talk about some happy things. And like before we started recording, we were mentioning that it might be a little hard to get like new specifically Takarazuka mm-hmm. things. So we might branch out a little bit. Um, but is there anything that's been making you happy lately? So, <laughs> um, I don't know. I've been baking a lot, I guess. I like yes. baking a lot. And now I suddenly <laughs> actually have the free time to do that. Um, and actually the other happy thing is still linked to Takarazuka, which is great. Um, I just uh-huh. recently watched a, um, sub stream of, um, Hoshigumi's God of Stars and it's so, it's just pure, just, it's pure silly fun. And I think that's, that's the best way to describe Kurana Yuzuru's um, Hoshigumi, it's just so much fun, and I know, uh-huh. I know that because it's a tie down, they made specific effort to make it even more just fun and and you know like not not angsty basically, and that right. it was just a really 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 fun show. So that was <laughs> fun. I, I need to stop saying that word, but yeah, you. No, it's true, and that one was kind of about cooking too, isn't it? Hey. Like the... Yeah, yes. it is. It is. <laughs> it brings it all together. Yes. Yeah, so cool. uh, I've been spoiled lately because my brother is like a baker mm-hmm. in a grocery store. So, but he's nice. been baking at home in his spare time too. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he keeps food. dropping stuff oh off for me. I'm mm-hmm. like, uh, I've been eating too much. <laughs> I mean, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so for me, I think my happy thing is number one. I got outside yesterday. It finally oh, warmed yes. up. But then I got, like, a horrible sunburn all over because I didn't wear any sunscreen. Um, Worth it. But then, um, Aono Yuki, who used to be a top musume yaku mm-hmm. of Moon Troop. Yeah. Um, and some of our listeners who went to see the OGs performing Chicago and New York City several years ago um, oh might have seen her in the show. But she's got a Twitter account, and she's been posting stuff, and she's always fun to to follow her account and one of the things she just randomly posted like you know i'm so bored at home so i've been watching um like the theme songs from takarazuka review shows and like singing along really loudly but i guess she's been singing la nostalgie um i think that's what no la poisson la poisson was like a star troop uh, review show in the mm. 90s and I guess that's probably about the time she was a fan like in her teenage years but she said she's been singing it so loudly in her apartment that her husband has the lyrics memorized now so that was really oh, funny bless. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of good stuff on Twitter yeah oh sure. actually one more happy thing is um yeah the they all of the Japanese musical theater people they made a cover of um well Actually, I'm actually forgetting the name of this song. Oh, my God. Um, um, do you hear the people sing? There we go. Yes, <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, did you see that one? I have. I saw, like, Broadway did a version too, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they did, um, they did one where it's like a stay-at-home version where everyone recorded, like, one segment right. and they put them together. And I think Manaki Reika was in there. Um, uh, Miu was in there. And, um, oh, my God, I can't pronounce her name. Um, K, K from Snow, uh, Yukigumi. Oto, um, Oto Zuki K. The, that one. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were in that, and it, it's really nice sounding, and it's just one of these other. I, the one good thing about, I guess, lockdowns is just you see weird people collaborating. Uh huh. It's it's so yeah. great. <laughs> That's definitely true. Yeah. We'll have to find some of those links and put them in the um, mm, show yeah, notes in our yeah. blog. So listeners, check them out if you haven't seen them already. Um, yeah, there's so much good stuff going on these days. It's it's fun to find it. So the topic was golden kambi. Kambi, like, from combination. Um, in Japanese, they love to take the first two syllables <laughs> to, like, shorten something. So it's golden kambi. Uh and it's interesting because there's a lot of like Takarazuka jargon that I feel like people take as gospel, but mm. <laughs> a lot of it tends to be made up by fans and or by like journalists. And it's not really like this is coming down from on high. This term means this. So I thought it would be kind of fun first to kind of talk about what we think of when we hear it and then 
kind of pull in a couple of things. Like I did a little research on Japanese fan sites to see what they thought was the mm. definition of a golden combi. And we can kind of pull it all together. Um, did you want to start, Kate? Um, sure. Sorry, I keep trying to get Yeah, just you get to start. <laughs> um, golden combi. I don't know. I just, I I feel like this is a very minor point, but like most combis who actually have a sort of a catchy name don't end up uh-huh. being called a golden combi. So that's one of them. Because I feel like uh, people call Rana, uh, Ranji Tomu and Ranohana, but they're kind of just known as the Rana Kombi yeah, yeah, yeah. at times. But yeah, no, for me, I guess, um, I mean, it's it's really difficult saying what it means for you, for um, a pair to be a golden combi for you, because you can always argue that, you know, oh, that that, that pair also has that sort of energy. Um, uh-huh. But I think, well basically what I most of the combis that really impressed me are the combis in which the Musumeyaku actually gets to have her own personality and shine okay so uh, for me I guess that's um I don't know <laughs> I don't know you you carry on I let you think <laughs> sure yeah yeah I it, it's interesting because you know you know like golden combi it makes it think of like something it's got to be really like high mm. you know like it's the most the the goal or something and I know when I was starting out as a fan and I first started hearing the phrase I thought it was more like um, somebody would say oh you know they they've reached the pinnacle they're like the mm. best and and so there's like they've got that chemistry or something that makes them the best but it, it was kind of like amorphous i i don't know it's like it's hard to think of and i feel like it's very subjective like one yeah, person might be like yeah this is my golden combi but that's why i thought it was kind of interesting because i hadn't really researched it in a while mm-hmm. and so i was kind of poking around and seeing like what the japanese fans were saying mm-hmm. And even they have, like, wildly differing, like, <laughs> definitions of yeah. what is a golden combi. Like, one woman on her blog was saying, well, I think they need two things. And one of the things was they need to, like, sell out shows really well. Uh-huh. Um, and the other thing is that they need to be remembered, like, long after they've left Tucker Asuka as, like, a pair together. Yeah. So I was like, I was like okay. I mean, one of those is kind of... Um, you know, thinking about the money side of things, you don't want to think about that with Takarazuka. Uh, but like leaving behind a piece of history, I'm like, yeah, I can, I can get that. Um, but another gentleman whose journal, like online blog, I was reading, I liked his definition a little better. He had like five or six things, and one of them was like, they each have to be like powerful in their own right, which I think kind of. Um, goes into what you were saying about like the musumeyaku has to be able to shine too. Mm-hmm. He said, but they also have to like complement each other so that together they're like better than the sum of their parts. Yeah, the sum of their true, parts is true. better than individual. And then he also said like that he wanted to see um, how was it he put it like either like together they might be like really powerful singers together. Or really powerful dancers together, so like oh. they have something that made them really special. Okay. Um, which I thought was interesting because then you'd see other people who were like, "Oh, they should like complement each yeah, other." Yeah. So one should sing and one should. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So you get like different opinions, and then like he also talked about like, but they should, their name should kind of go down in history. So I was like, okay, mm. so. Like putting all of that together is like okay. So really, anybody again could be a cool. Yeah, it's copy. very subjective, isn't it? Yeah. So I thought it would be kind of fun to just talk about some of our favorite pairs today, and we might think of them as golden combis or maybe not. And it would be kind of interesting then to get like feedback from all the listeners, like in our yeah. comment section. Tell us who do you think is your golden combi and why. So. Um, but instead of throwing you under the bus first again this time. <laughs> yes, you go. I'll go first. And I guess I'll I'll actually start with the one that we weren't sure if we were going to put in. 
because now I think that we've been talking about names that kind of go down in history. We should probably start with them. I think even when I entered fandom in 2005, they were already considered like the golden combi was Wow Yoka and Hanafusa Mari. Oh, yep, yep. Of Soragumi, which I think is really interesting because Hanafusa Mari had already had four top star Otokoyaku partners before she became Wow Yoka's partner. So it wasn't like they were the only yeah. people who were together as top stars, mm -hmm. or the only people that she was like partners with. but. That's like who she's remembered with. Ohana is like her partnership with Wawyoka. Yeah. So. And it's it's really interesting as well because she had amazing career with all four of her partners. Yes. I mean, especially with I, I would I would say with Shizuki Asato, they did some uh -huh. amazing stuff together. So yeah. yeah, that I guess that just crosses out one of many of our categories of I, I think <laughs> well you no, you give your <laughs> you give your really <laughs> viewpoint about it, and I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and I, I think part of it was they were they were top stars together for six years, which mm -hmm. was a long time. They did sell out shows really well. Like they were very popular with the fans. Um, they were both very talented. They were both talented, like singers and dancers and actors. So uh, they won a lot of stage awards, mm -hmm. not just from Takarazuka, but from outside like theater organizations. So. You know, they were recognized as being really good separately. And then I think together they had a crazy chemistry that a lot of people really loved. Mm. Yeah. So what do you think about them? Well, there's always the, um, I don't know, there's always the, <laughs> I don't know whether this is, lots of people don't like talking about this, um, but you, you kind of have to see the, the chemistry component and, you know, people were speculating. They, like, that oh, couple yeah. of people were very wildly speculating. I think it's probably the most um, gossiped about sort of quote-unquote relationship within and out of Takarazuka because even when, and again, I don't know that much about Wayoka, but I remember seeing, I think she did, like, a dinner show after she retired or something and they just had that chemistry on and off stage and people were wildly <laughs> speculating about things and I think that yeah. was also what brought that combi to into basically everyone's yeah it's yeah it's, yeah actually that brings up another point that thank you that I had meant <laughs> to mention and completely forgotten so that's perfect yeah. I think yeah it's that off stage relationship that they mm. at least even if it's not real that they manage to project like mm. in all the interviews that they do everybody feels like oh they're such a cute couple yeah. kind of a feel and I think that's true for a lot of pairs that people really thought were great together yeah. so yeah you're totally right they and I did. remember when um while Yoka announced that she was getting married oh dear yeah. lord the internet <laughs> just freaking went wild <laughs> Yeah, oh. well, especially who she decided to marry. Yeah, I, <laughs> I remember there being so much hate for Wildhorn for like the longest period of time. And then I think um, then he wrote songs for Takarazuka again and was like, ah, oh, we forgive him because the songs he write are so great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Um, yeah, it is. Oh, speaking of which, actually, um, while Yoka's Instagram account, um, she actually posted also like kind of quarantine music show of Wildhorn just playing um, his songs on a piano. And I think a week ago, uh, he actually played Never Say Goodbye. And I was like, oh. Oh, no. Ooh. That breaks my heart. That was such, that a, good was song, such a good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so who is your uh, first pair that you'd like to talk about? Okay, first pair. Uh, oh, which one should I pick? I mean, okay, while we're on the subject of Wildhorn, then, um, huh. probably uh, Nozomi Huto and uh, Maya Kiho, because okay. Hikari Furu, so that was their 
Grand Theatre debut. And I think, um, so speaking of, you know, you talked about Top Combi having that one trait, that one talent that they both share. And Daikiho is definitely a singing um, combi. And uh-huh. I think no show, no, no musical shows that better than Hikari Furu. So um, I think quite quite a lot of people got into Daikiho either from Phantom or from Hikari Furu because they're just, I mean, it's the first, so it's the most polished um, Grand Theatre debut I've ever seen and arguably probably my favourite musical out of Takarazuka. It, it might not be my favourite show because it's it's more more something to listen to than to watch but it's the music is just absolutely sublime i mean part of it is all down to wildhorn because he writes amazing music but part of it is daiki ho's performance and just the way they sing they the way they sing to each other and at each other it's Uh really really powerful um but yeah, so they are just in in my opinion probably the best singing um, top couple at least. Um, and oh no, see chemistry wise, Daikiho is actually a bit of a outlier in like the recent because I feel like as we the the re- more recent top combis are all getting um very like very cutesy couple like and yeah. i absolutely adore that um and daikiho doesn't fit into it because um uh daimon is he he just doesn't show that much emotion off stage and it's hilarious watching like kiho just flailing and then daimon just going ah huh, fair enough <laughs> and um <laughs> so so yeah, they have a very different kind of chemistry. They have really good chemistry yeah. on stage, but off stage, they're more like bros, I would say. But also, that is like such a like a Japanese comic book kind of relationship, yeah, like the it stoic, is. It the is. stoic male lead and the like flaily cutesy <laughs> yep. female lead. So yeah. I could see that as being something that would really appeal to like a Japanese audience. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so awesome. th- they're one that's a bit low on oh my god people are <laughs> people are gonna kill me for saying this but I, like even as a massive daikiho fan i can see that their offstage chemistry is a bit lower than the other ones but on stage they are just the one of the best musicals theater actors i've seen like anywhere basically so well, yeah what what i would love fans to tell us is like if you've heard any cute anecdotes about these two <laughs> off stage yeah, yeah. <laughs> give us the tales so we can we can add to that because um i haven't really been reading like graph and kageki and stuff mm. like that and that's usually where all those cute little like yeah, stories come out true. too <laughs> um what else so they're good singing how's their dancing do they do any like really memorable pair dances um, together again as a massive daikiho fan i i can say that um their dances are not as impressive as so again their strength lies they they they're such good singers that it almost overshadows any other traits they have um the yeah no their dancing is definitely not anywhere as near as good as their (laughs) singing And I wouldn't say that takes away from it at all. Like you said, they're such good singers. Mm. Like, sometimes that's all you really need. Mm. Yeah, they made that, um, they got like, out, they got this album out, which is, see, I just love that they, Hank you actually, you know, sewn into their, their strengths and just went with that because Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know, I feel like top stars nowadays are almost required to be good at, like, singing and acting and dancing. (laughs) And even as someone who actually got into Takarazuka because of a dance clip, I am just 
yeah, just for me, Daikiho is so much closer to what I started getting musical theater, f- getting into musical theater for, which is just the music. And yeah. it's just really yeah. refreshing to have that. And I think it's hard with Takarazuka because our perceptions are a little skewed mm. because of the demands that are put on the otokoyaku vocals to yep. sing so low and outside maybe their natural range for a lot yeah. of them. Like, it's not as purely strong as, like, a traditional musical theater voice might be. And yeah. same for musumeyaku. Like, they're forced to sing so much mm. higher because they need to have that um, difference from the otokoyaku. That I think it does sometimes, like... <laughs> other musical fans might hear Takarazuka for the first time and be like, the singing is horrible, you know, and that's not true all the time. But it is it is kind of a Takarazuka weakness, but it's also something that's so unique. Yeah. Actually, I would confidently say that whenever I have a musical theater fellow friend, um, you know, kind of and when we hang out and when I say, oh, can I suggest a musical to you? The only... Um, the Takarazuka musical I would show them is Hikari Furu by Daikyo because I know that's the one that will most um, closely match their expectations of how singing sounds like in musical. Not that saying that should be like the thing that we look for, but it's just easy to get yeah. non-fans into um, Takarazuka, and I just yes. really like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely see that. Mm. All right, my next one, in, I guess I'll go uh, time-wise. I'll start with... <laughs> Koju Tatsuki and Nagisa Aki. Yeah, tell me were, about them. Yeah, they were top stars in um, Star Troop. And so one of the reasons some people... Th- consider them a golden combi is they were kind of the first top stars in star troop coming into the 21st century mm-hmm. um so it was kind of a big shift um and but some people say well they're they were such an unassuming top star pair like they weren't splashy they're like can they still be considered a golden combi yeah. but i think they could be because they were both pretty old when they became top stars. Nagisa oh, Aki was like Ken 12, which is like unheard oh, of for wow. Musumeyaku top star. And so I think they both brought so much technical skill and like comfort and mm. like they were pretty settled in their own skins, you know? And they were just a beautiful, mature pairing. And I think you're going to see a, a pattern in the people that I picked. <laughs> I really, I love that for me, like the first Takarazuka show that really like sucked me in, not the first one that I saw, yeah. but the first one that I was like, okay, I'm obsessed with this thing was actually um, Shibuki Jun's Guys and Dolls. Mm. And it's like that old yes. school Hollywood, yep. like 1940s, 50s, like that is what I love. And I feel like Koju Tatsuki and Nagisa Aki had that like mature kind mm. of feel. And they did a lot of fun shows together that were just like, you could see that maturity that a lot of younger stars couldn't pull off. Mm. Um, and yeah, I just, I love their acting. Um, Koju Tatsuki and Nagisa Aki were both actually really good singers. Maybe nice. Tatsun was a little bit of a better singer than Nagisa Aki, but um, yeah, I just love them together. Um, what was their favorite yeah. show that, uh, what was your favorite show that they did? Um, I loved Glassy Landscape, mm-hmm. which some people might have seen because um, Takarazuka and Sandy Project did as a fan sub, but it was almost like a film noir, not film noir. Really? I say. Yeah, it was <laughs> like, it's a murder mystery. Oh my god. <laughs> But with, like, Takarazuka bits of comedy, like, thrown oh, in. Good. But you're trying to figure out, like, like there's this corpse that shows up. And everybody's like, oh, who killed yes. him? So, and then you find out that the Koju Tatsuki's character isn't who he seems to be. Uh, um, and it all, all takes place in, like, this villa in Italy. So it's, like, very, like, traditional murder mystery. Yeah, it's a fun show. I recommend it to everybody. And it's got... Um, 
choreography that is to die for. Um, so nice. highly, highly recommended. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I definitely recommend them if somebody hasn't been like exposed to like that time period of Takarazuka. It's a lot of fun. Nice. <laughs> so song, um, what's it? Song dance, and uh, um, performance. Which yes. Which category would you say they fall into? Um, I'd say as a pair, which is kind of what we're focusing yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Probably acting, acting. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Nice. So. <laughs> and you know what we should do? Yeah. Um, we don't don't typically do this, but I think what I might do is grab a couple seconds of each of our combis like singing a theme song together, <gasps> and I think I'm gonna stick them in this episode um when i edit it that so would be hopefully good. our listeners will enjoy that too get a little bit of what we're talking about that would be really great <laughs> all right so who's your next pair okay so speaking of i like how this <laughs> kind of nicely segues the whole way through speaking of mature um top yeah. combies uh i will yeah i'll bring up the one that i thought we would talk about either than Ranju Tomu and Rano Hana. Okay. So, yeah. so Ranju Tomu is, I think, what you were describing as like the mature. You know, he always she. My God, she. My pronouns are horrible. It's, she it's always, such an easy thing to slip into. <laughs> I know. I do the same thing sometimes. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> horrible with pronouns when it comes to Takara Um Yeah, she always plays that older man. Um, you know, like that play, not playboy. I wouldn't say playboy, but like. You know that sli- slightly sly, cleverish, roguish, older man, mm-hmm. and that's just mm-hmm. completely my type. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and yeah, so in you know, I'd said about the liver, liver tango cliff, and they are very much a dancing combi. So <laughs> that's nice. We've had song, yes. we've had performance, we have dance. So Ranji Tong and Ranohana, definitely, their dancing is so Ranji Tomu dances like I freaking I don't know he's like the best mm, one of the best dancers I've seen in Takarazuka just yes. her alone dancing amazing um but then Ranohana can maneuver her body to like be so light that when when these two dance they they kind of defy the laws of gravity and it's just really, <laughs> really amazing. And because their dances involve so many of like lifts and just, you know, jumps and just uh-huh. that little thing. I don't know what you call them. You lift them into the air very shortly and you put them down. And then she just looks like a feather. And they always uh-huh. do that. And they're so pretty. And um, I remember there's one dance in, I can't remember which show, which musical it was in, but um, just the choreography. The, the way they position their bodies, it's like an almost impossible angle, and they're just <laughs> so beautiful when they move together. It's, yeah, that's that for me. <laughs> oh, that's, you know, it's very interesting to me because um, I came into Takarazuka, like, my live viewing stage was mostly, like, from 2007 to like 2012 mm-hmm. like I saw a lot of those things live on stage and that was when Rano Hana was doing like Christian Jin Cohen and her smaller mm-hmm. theater leads in Moon Troop yeah and she was often paired with Ryu Masaki who was like my yeah star and it's funny because so I think of uh Rano Hana as being very young and kind of baby-faced but she was always such an excellent dancer and I love Masaki, but she was not a great dancer. <laughs> yes. I mean, she, was, she was fine, but she wasn't, like, yeah. amazing. Yeah, no, okay. And so they never had, like, pair dances mm. together, even when there was, like, a mini review at the end of the show. Like, Or yeah. if they did, they were kind of, like, walking around each other. And there were no lifts <laughs> and stuff. So I'm glad that she ended up being paired with somebody mm-hmm. who could, like, match her on a dancing level. Yeah. That's that's really good. Yeah. And she It's really funny, because whenever she dances... Mo- at least most of the times when she dances, she becomes this. She becomes this mature person, right? Because uh-huh. on, whenever they're dancing, it's always like a tango or something, something with like heat and fire behind it. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, there's always some, um, some kind of, I don't know, they, they had this very on Takarazuka feeling whenever they do like their review, uh, re- review, I cannot pronounce that word, re- review. Yeah. Reviews. Um, so she's always like that. She she always she almost has that sort of dominatrix vibe oh. to her. I know it's not the right way to describe it, but there is literally one dance where she kind of handles Ranjitomu like he was a puppet. Yeah, so it's very sen- it's like sensual. Yeah, it's very like... sensual. That's the word I was looking for. Sensual. They are very yeah. sensual on stage, but then when you look at their musical, sh- she's always that pure cute young sometimes you know <laughs> sometimes that they really focus on the age difference and like one of the musicals is seriously troublesome because it was like uh it was adapted from this film and it was french and the age difference was just freaking awkward oh i know exactly yeah, you know what, which one i'm talking about right i think I saw Shibuki Jr. Yeah, I was about to say that. He, he did it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she, yeah. yeah so that one. And she also had a much younger Musume Aku partner, so mm. that even made it more, like, awkward. Yeah, so, yeah. so that, it's it's really funny, the um, contrast that Rano Hana has in her, in the musicals, in the shows, and in the reviews, and the dinner shows and stuff. Huh. You know what? You've made me really want to see more of their reviews together. Oh yeah, do. Oh my god, yes, know do that it. I have. So I will have to go back and watch some yeah. stuff again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am going to take that and I'm going to throw in because we've got some time here. We haven't spent too long talking. Mm. I think I'm going to throw in a new combi because you've inspired me. Yeah. And I think listeners who really like that Ron Ron combi might like this one too. <laughs> Asaji Saki um, and Shiraki Ayaka were also um, Star Troop top stars in the like mid to late 90s mm-hmm. and they were also a dancing combi and Asaji Saki was like huge like she had like eight Shinko leads like she was really popular Otokoyaku but she really can't sing, oh, <laughs> which is what makes it amazing that she went on to become a top star and everything. Mm-hmm. Like I actually like her voice is kind of an acquired taste, almost like Ozora Yuhi when she was younger. Like she has some uh, stuff going on there. Wait, did, but, didn't she do Elizabeth? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. She was, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. One of the first Der Tots. Um, but their kami, like they were both dancers. And Asaji Saki was one of those otokoyaku who had amazing upper body strength. <laughs> so she would do those lifts in the pair dances and she would lift her partner and spin them forever. Like, you would be like, when is she going to put her down? Never is the answer. Like, and they also had amazing, like, tango dances mm. that were so, like, sensual, you know? And I just love them to death. And I probably saw every show that they did, did together like and some of their smaller stage smaller theater shows were also amazing because they had even more like dancing and stuff mm-hmm. together so huge recommendation of um asaji saki and shiraki ayaka if you like dancing oh, I, I miss those <laughs> um sensual like mature top combis yeah they are so good <laughs> um so since i snuck in an extra one who else would you like to talk about um I was actually going to let you talk about your next one, and then I can seamlessly segue into me because you, yeah, oh, no, yeah, go on. You okay. go talk. You talk about yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, we have a very similar taste here because my next is also another mature combi, top combi. <laughs> Kirian Hiromu and Aono Yuki, mm-hmm. which is interesting because when I really got into Takarazuka, it was like the Shibuki Jun era, mm. um, going into the Sena Jun era, and Kirian Hiromu, Ozora Yuhi, like I loved Yuhi so much, and Kirian was kind of like, okay, that other like Nibante that they kind of shared <laughs> together. Um, and then, you know, 
I started to get to l- know her more and her personality, and I really liked Kirian. And so I was excited when she was going to be the next top star. Um, and then they pulled in Aono Yuki from Star Troop, and I think I might have seen her in a couple of things, but not a lot. Like, she was pretty young when she mm. got pulled over and paired with Kirian. And Kirian was one of those older otokoyaku that everybody was like, when are they going to make her top star? When are mm. they going to make her top star? So that she finally becomes top star. Um, and then they give her this young kind of unknown from Star Troop. And I was like, okay, you know, I was just kind of, I was excited because Masaki was like Sambante Nibante finally. Mm, and I was like, yeah. ooh, like my top, like my star is like going somewhere. <laughs> and then I absolutely like fell in love with Kirian and, and Marimo like together. And even though Aono Yuki was so young, she never seemed young. Like even in the musical shows that they gave her, like her roles were never like that bright young thing mm-hmm. like she always had this maturity to her even when she, they did beauty and the beast and she played Belle. like Belle is kind of a mature nice. character you know like because she's the reader she's the thinker um even in the fairy tale the princess she's kind of the mature one mm-hmm. so i you know and they're just they had that gravitas that they brought to their shows the acting was amazing I loved their singing. I loved their dancing together. I just felt like they had a little bit of everything. Aww. So, and I ended up like, for some reason, like there's always that like dud grand theater show or that like dud small theater show that mm-hmm. like top stars get, you know, that kind of, oh, this is the funny show that we're yeah. gonna put together for yeah. them or whatever. And I didn't feel like they had any of those. I felt like every single one of their shows, like, they were all, like, really different. Like, they did the Beauty and the Beast fairy tale, and then they did, like, Edward VIII, you know? It was, like, super different kinds of shows, but I felt like they all were pretty good. And I, like, I actually translated most of them, which I usually don't translate a lot of shows like from beginning to end but i just felt like the scripts were so good um which is i love takaraska but <laughs> a lot of the dialogue is not so great you know yeah, it's not no, really definitely worth not. translating <laughs> but these shows were like i was like yeah these are worth translating so they just had like all that stuff came together and it just made i think a, a really great combi so nice yeah i'll definitely check them out i i've not seen much i've not not seen anything at all from them but i have seen one clip of ano yuki dancing and i think it's the um is it the belly dance from um what's it called uh, man uh, from man from Algiers, that one yeah. yeah i saw a clip of that and it's so pretty yeah yeah oh my god she's a great dancer yeah, I know. she married a dancer too she after did. she retired <laughs> so you know dancing was like a passion of hers. oh nice. <laughs> she should co- do choreography for top of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So, like you said, I think that's yes. it. Is <laughs> so, nicely. segue into another um, top combi with a very big, um, well, age, age difference. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, my next one is Micha and Fucha, or Hokusho Kairi and Hinami Fu. So, these two came out of nowhere. I mean, Michan herself <laughs> came out of nowhere because she was in Senka for um, years. How many years? Many, many, many years. Um, <laughs> and just that like many. everyone... <laughs> yeah, oh my god, she was in there forever. Um, so I think the first two years, and again, I wasn't a fan at that point, but I just from the general feel of it, I think the first two years, people were still kind of holding on to hope that she might eventually you know move on to another troop or something but i think by the time you know 2014 2015 she was pretty much you know solidly grounded in senka and people expected her to just go on and play all of the older roles and musicals and then suddenly uh yuzi kireo and uh yumasaki nene left and um they put her in and everyone I think people were excited but also really confused um (laughs) it was it was confusing it was really really confusing because here was a um I think she's probably not the oldest yeah probably not the oldest otokoyaku to um become a top star but certainly amongst the oldest Mm -hmm. and on the other side we have this 
basically, she, um, Hoon-chan was, like, the daughter of Hoshigumi at the time. Like, she got, she was the, she got Shinji Cohen for um, Napoleon, which is, like, the biggest show at that time. Um, so there was this uh, 95th class girl and Micha. And people got, yeah, it was, it was just really unexpected. Yeah. But then Hucha pulled it off, like you said about Onoiki, she pulled it off. She really did. And so uh, she actually did play younger looking roles, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, so she, her roles were mostly you know, bubbly, innocent, young girl. But her sage presence was like strong enough to match that of Micha's. And like Micha was always so gentle with her that it just worked and i yeah they are they are a um i think they're they're probably because mi is such a good singer and hun jang is like i would say she's decent to good she's really good when it's like a recording she does really really amazing um albums i think Hosh- hoshigumi at the time did like a disney album and it was the cutest thing ever um <laughs> and yeah so mi and fujan did um a whole new world that one um and it's i think that that just got me into that couple because they, they're singing voice compliment each other the way they look at each other it's really really cute um uh, i lost my train of thought there but yeah so they're a sing couple but i think the the their um strength definitely lies in their chemistry both on and off stage they're just mm-hmm. really really cute <laughs> yeah i think they had one of those like big sister little sister mm. like vibes between them where you knew like one was looking out for the other which i think yeah really appealed yeah yeah and like michan because michan is older and also just a much um just a very calm um just a very common i don't know grounded sort of character and then huchan's just all over the place she was like yeah she is chaotic (laughs) and i just really like that dynamic and also that plays into um when they did guys and dolls um yeah but, yeah guys and dolls funnily enough um when i was in high school our school actually did a production of it and that was seeing that um kind of decreased my love for musical for like a very long time because i just did not like it at all at the time really? i saw this school's production i was like i hate this musical this is so silly it is so dumb the, the songs are bad but then I saw <laughs> Micha's Guys and Dolls, and then it's now just one of my favorite musicals in Takanasuka, so I don't I don't know what happened there. But yeah, <laughs> Guys and Dolls is so good. So good. Yes, yeah, it's a good musical. I actually haven't seen... I saw Michan because she did... Um, she was in the Shinjin Koen of Shibuki Jun. Like, she played nice. Nathan Detroit. So I've seen her as Nathan, <gasps> but I haven't actually seen her as Sky. So one of these days I'll have to watch it. I'm just, like, I'm so in love with, like, Rika's version, Shibuki mm. Jun, that I'm like, I don't know if I can watch anybody oh. else's. <laughs> I know that in so. the um, the drunk scene, um, didn't, like, she carry, um, what was the character's name? Sarah? Like, she kind of uh-huh. carried her off that platform. And, like, everyone was like, oh, when they do it this time, will she do it? And then she didn't. <laughs> so, like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, so segue yeah. into your couple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm going to stop there because there's so many oh, okay. <laughs> amazing combis. But if you have one more or any more that you wanted to talk about, let's throw them in there. No, I think I've, I've got all of them. <laughs> Yeah, I think at this point we'll leave it up to the listeners to kind of yeah. share their favorite pairs um, with us because there are so many and people love them for so many different reasons. That do you want really to do like hear. a honorary mentions? Sure, go ahead. Uh, okay, okay, sorry for me. <laughs> um, well, since you you are very much in the kind of the older characteristic, um, I feel like people don't mention them enough, but like Todoroki, you and. Um, Oh my god. <laughs> this is the place where I forget what her name is. Um, <laughs> Hitomi. Something Hitomi. Anyway, Todoki Yu and her partner from um, Yukigumi, they were, they were oh, really... Tsukigagi. Yeah, Hitomi. Tsukigagi. Yeah. Uh, Hitomi, there we go. They were brilliant. 
in I mean I've only seen um uh Kai 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 Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That one. Uh Arts Arts of Triumph. Triumph. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, they're really good in that. Um another one I feel like people will Yeah, we'll have to mention Yuzuki Reo and Yume Saki Nene because you know, six years. They are such an iconic um combi. And uh no, I don't have anyone else. <laughs> I guess I would say Aran K and yes, um, yes, yes. Tono Asuka because singing is another singing mm. combi. They were um, pretty amazing. Uh, who else do I want to talk about? There are so many. It's I guess really, the really other one, down. Um, it's this top combi from, I think there were also Oshiku. Oh, Go on. Uh, Daichi Mao. Um, yes, yes, yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. People are going to be saying that. Yeah, uh, Daichi Mao and Kuroki Tomi. Um, mm. Daichi Mao was fairly young when she became top star. She was like 10-9, um, but her partner Kuroki Hitomi was only Ken 1 or Ken 2. And Kuroki Hitomi was always talking about how she looked out for her um, when they became top stars together. Mm. Yeah, they're good. Um, I mean, I feel like any top star got me, <laughs> with the exception yeah. of like, uh, I think them, like a mostly, couple of people. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think about. Oh, I think Todoroki Yu and Ohana were not a good combi. <laughs> I, I've not actually seen anything from them. Were they they not? only did like one show together, which I think was pretty, um, pretty. That's weird of because what like out of them as a combi. I don't. Oh, that that is so weird because half of sense like so amazing. Yeah, they and just like did totally not click. you were so amazing. But <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh bless. Um. Oh, I know who I've got to talk about because we haven't really talked about Flower Troop too much. Yeah. Talked about Ron Ron, but um. Uh, Haru no Sumire. Yeah, uh, but which which one? <laughs> I was uh, about to say which I, wife, but yeah. like, which one? <laughs> yeah, which wife? I mean, they were... Um, her first two, I think a lot of people... People didn't like Fuzuki Mio for some reason when she first became her partner, but I thought they were good partners together. But for me, like, one of my best Takarazuka friends loved Sakura no Ayane and was in her fan oh. club, and so... Yeah, she's cute. Uh, for me, those two together are... are I prefer... I definitely prefer Ayane with um, Matobuse. No, Matobuse. Oh, I love them together Yeah, they're well. so yeah. cute. But I... Um, yeah. I don't know. How do you know Sumire is... Her... Her Elizabeth... Whoever played yeah. Elizabeth and her Elizabeth, I liked her a lot. Can't remember her name. God damn it. Oh, Otori Rei. Yeah. yeah, she was good too. Oh, she was so pretty as Elizabeth. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, she had that gravitas. I she was definitely one of those Masuyaku who just looked, you know, older, mature, and just had that presence. Yeah. It was yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's just so many. Yeah. <laughs> it's, and, like, it's interesting because as you go back into, like, the 70s, like, before there was, like, an official top star mm. system, you get a lot more of those, like, mature musumeyaku. Yeah. So it gets interesting. So. Bring them back! <laughs> <laughs> everything will everything will balance in yeah. the end. I feel like if, if all of the top stars now, and as, as much as I love them, they're getting way too young. Not the, yeah. not the, maybe not the otokuyakus, but at least they're making the otokuyakus look a lot younger. Even if yeah. their stage age might not be that young, they're just uh-huh. playing much more into the younger audience, that kind of <laughs> idol, idol culture. Yeah, I worry that as I get older, everybody else seems younger. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, never gonna, it's never gonna, it's never gonna fix. <laughs> but, oh, um... Bless. Thank you so much, Kate. I think this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but let's end it there. And thank you to our listeners for uh, joining us today. Many thanks to Michael B. and the Arcanum String Quartet for their wonderful arrangement of Sumire no Hana Sakugoro. And thank you, listeners, for enjoying our podcast. <laughs> <laughs>